record so we can Okay. Uh, I want to uh, thank everyone for uh, participating. Um, my name is Stuart Matsunaga. I'm the Acting Administrator for Land Development Division. Um, we have a great team at uh, DHHL who are involved in uh, moving Naiva Agricultural Subdivision forward. You know, the first step is the environmental assessment. And um, I wanna introduce Andrew Choi, who is our administrator um, or planning program manager for the planning office. Um, also from the department, um, you were introduced to Juan Garcia. Again, he's the Homestead Services Administrator. Uh -huh. And um, Neil Nugent is a, a recent acquisition of, uh, for the land development division. He's an engineer five and uh, uh, he's, um, we, we see a great future for Neil and his participation in many different subdivisions uh, throughout the state. So we welcome Neil and uh, we thought this was a good opportunity for him to engage with uh, the community. And so, um, you know, we do also wanna uh, re-engage because we met uh, several uh, years ago and uh, I would be remiss to uh, not introduce um, the RM Towel uh, team of engineers and planners and uh, we have Brian Takeda who is a planner with RM Towel and we have uh, Gordon Ring uh, engineer with arm towel. So um, they're covering both the, the planning and EA aspects of this project. And Gordon is handling um, the engineering, going into the, um, the, uh, the engineering report and then moving into um, construction designs and plans so that we can get that out to bid. Okay. Um, we have a presentation um, you know for the community and this is uh, would be an identical presentation that we take before the commission next week but we wanted to come to the community first to provide that information to you and uh, you know if there's any uh, comments or anything that we can help with um, prior to the meeting uh, we wanted to uh, engage with you and, and give you this opportunity uh, before next week. So um, if there are any other, uh, any questions from the Kiahas before we start, I'm go good to go? Okay. Um, so Arm Towel will, um, will uh, provide the uh, presentation via a uh, PowerPoint. And this would be um, what is going to be presented also to the commission next week. It's on our it's on our website because the agenda was filed uh, today with all of the documents. So um, and then following this, we will provide a link to the actual draft EA document. And so um, with that, I don't want to say anything more and just get right down to the meat of it. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Do I need to? Let's see. So Brian, you can you can take it away. Okay. I'm not sure okay. if your I'm not sure that you'll- yeah, I hope you'll uh, bear with me while I get everything okay. on online. Okay. Okay, I think you can see my screen. Can someone acknowledge? Yep. Okay. I see it. Yep. 
the project involves the Naiva Agricultural Subdivision. And at the moment, we have an in-progress draft environmental assessment. And this document is a requirement of Hawaii Revised Statutes, Chapter 343. Um, if you're already familiar with it, I will try to provide the, um, the, uh, the most basic points. And then following the presentation, we'll talk a little bit about the project schedule. And then at that point, I'll turn the question and answer session back to Stuart. So <clears throat> let me turn to the first slide. Okay, this is the location of the Eva Agricultural Subdivision. We have um, basically um, a lot or one large subdivision comprised of six lots. And there actually is a six lot. There's a small piece right in here that is included. Together, it comprises about 431 acres. And we will have uh, a total of up to 66 lots. The project site, you can tell immediately, is next to the Molokai Airport, which is to uh, slightly to the west and north of the project site. And then surrounding land uses, as identified uh, in the column to the right, there are several in the surrounding area. We know, I'm not sure if you can see my cursor, but um, can can someone verify if you can see my cursor? Yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So right in this area, we have Kuma Farms. We know that Aluliki is within this area. There are also some other smaller um, establishments surrounding the immediate project area. So that would include the Molokai community Federal Credit Union, the First Hawaiian Homes Federal Credit Union. There's a postal facility and a Baptist church uh, just slightly north of the site. Later, when we prepare the EA, you'll find a listing of all of the properties surrounding the subdivision to give you a better sense of orientation. As when we first came to the community, we identified about 58 lots that would be provided. Uh, since that time, about 50 of these lots have been awarded to beneficiaries and about eight of these lots were identified as vacant. So the, let me point out where those are. So the eight lots that are currently vacant are in these areas here with this uh, second set of dashed lines through them. And then there are another set of four lots here. So uh, 30, 31, 33, and 37. And there are two other lots further to the east, lot 14 and lot nine located here. DHHL is examining the vacant lots with survey and civil engineering studies to see if it is feasible to divide each of the vacant lots into two lots to create a total of 16 lots. Therefore, the existing 50 lots and the possible 16 lots would account for about approximately 66 lots. The items being studied include whether the lots are feasible for agricultural uses to meet the purpose and need for the project, the site terrain and the proximity of the site to the Molokai Airport, as well as other uh, important factors to maintain existing runoff discharge rates, the increase in runoff on site will be met with detention basins. And they're identified on the project site with these um, blue circles or ovals. Um, the scale of these are actually deceptive because they will be much smaller. We just made them a little larger so that everyone could see it. And then we've identified a few lots identified in yellow where we know that there are a few existing homes located on the site. So the basins are intended to remain dry except when they're needed for the temporary storage of stormwater runoff. And as much as possible, the basins are located in vacant areas or unusable portions of the existing lots. And furthermore, when the basins are 
later constructed, they will be fenced to maintain public safety, as well as to ensure the location of the easements where the basins need to be located on. This um, exhibit identifies the process that DHHL will follow for the environmental review of the project. And you can see to date that a great deal of work had already been undertaken by the department, including a number of technical studies, a preliminary engineering report, project alternatives, leading all the way to the startup of the draft EA. And finally, um, we are in this portion of the process here. And the plan is for the submittal of a draft environmental assessment for public review and comment sometime in the um, May 2023 timeframe. And Stuart may elect to, and if it is possible, uh, try, to, try to go for publication sooner than that. But, you know, of course, that, that'll depend on a number of factors. And Stuart can go ahead and explain that when, when the time comes. And uh, also, I also wanted to uh, say that, uh, Stuart, if you have anything to add to um, uh, to the discussion, do not hesitate to interrupt me since I know that there may be some interesting factors going on with the project that I, I may not be aware of. And then the same thing go, goes for Gordon Ring, who is the project's uh, civil engineer who has worked extensively on laying out the location for a number of the physical facilities to support the subdivision, including electrical, uh, water, uh, road utilities, things of that sort. And a few things to note regarding when the draft environmental assessment is published is that the public comment period will be for a period of 30 days. And, the, and that based on the feedback received, the draft EA will be revised and submitted to the Hawaiian Homes Commission in the form of a final environmental assessment and a statement which is a finding of no significant impact, which means that upon review of the project and the studies that were involved, there's been a determination that the project can move forward and the commission will be asked to review and approve the publication of the final EA and FONSI. The publication of this document will be done by the current environmental review program. And this is the current name of what used to be called the Office of Environmental Quality Control. So they serve as the state's clearinghouse. The documentation when it's signed and authorized by DHHL will be turned into the ERP and then will be in the publication period. And for the final EA, after it is published, there is only a 30-day public challenge period. At the end of that 30-day period, the project will be able to move from the planning stage and we will enter the design phase. Again, um, this is basically the project description. And we do have a preliminary parcel layout. Uh, the thing I want to note is that uh, the final design may provide for some modifications, all for the purpose of ensuring that the project works well. And this would include uh, making adjustments to the location of some of the utilities and infrastructure, such as water, power, uh, irrigation lines, things of that nature. And so for each of the lots, they can be utilized for one of three options. They will include agricultural purposes, or a family may decide to construct a single family dwelling on it or they may decide to do a combination of both a single family dwelling and utilizing the remaining portion of the lot for agricultural purposes. <clears throat> uh, 
the infrastructure that is proposed to support the site will be necessary and utilized to provide for growth of the agricultural subdivision. These include the provision of access roads constructed to county standards and may include a paved all-weather surface. The all-weather weather surfaces would be used to support use by emergency service vehicles as well as equipment. Rating, runoff, drainage, and erosion controls will include demolition and the removal and clearing of vegetation to make way for access roadways, of the water system, and electrical utilities. Project will adhere to county Maui drainage standards and thus management practices will be utilized during construction to ensure against protection from erosion and to reduce runoff to state waters. The project will be supported with a dual water system providing for both a drinking water supply as well as irrigation water supply. The source of the water will come from the Molokai water system and potable water would be provided by based on an increase in the existing allocation of water by the Commission on Water Resource Management. BHHL will request this and the Commission on Water Resource Management will provide the allocation of potable water from the Molokai water system wells. And um, we can verify from the engineering effort that the project has sufficient water pressure to support the subdivision. And finally, irrigation water would be provided through the Department of Agriculture, Molokai Irrigation System as requested by DHHL. For electrical power and telephone service, power would be provided from existing Hawaiian Electric Company uh, substation, transformers, utility boxes, and all necessary electrical apparatus would be provided as required to establish necessary connection to the island's electrical grid. And individual wastewater systems would be allowed on individual lots and will be the responsibility of the individual lessees. The IWS or individual wastewater system will be based on meeting Department of Health standards and for minimum lot sizes of 10,000 feet, these systems would be required. And all lots within the Naiba subdivision will meet this minimum standard. And finally, solid waste handling and disposal would be the responsibility of the individual lessees. I'd like to review a little bit of uh, some of what we found by doing the investigation of the site itself. Um, in 2021, Cultural Surveys Hawaiian archeological firm conducted a reconnaissance level survey of the project site. And a few years later, they were able to complete a cultural impact assessment to get a better sense of community sentiment and um, knowledge of any of the cultural resources and the importance and the meaning of them within this specific region. Um, basically, the entire project site was once owned by the state government since the 1948 Mahele. And the resources discovered on the site included remnants of an old irrigation ditch, which is believed to be associated with pre-1900 sugarcane agriculture. The second item that was discovered was a possible World War II era munitions storage area from, from the second war. And finally, a possible wastewater treatment facility, which comes from the same time frame. And given that these resources are on site, personnel that will be involved in construction, including lessees um, working their land, will be informed of possible inadver inadvertent cultural or human skeletal finds. 
And should any of these be found, the SHPD or the State Historic Preservation Division is to be immediately notified for further actions, including temporary stoppage of work while the site is investigated for next steps as determined by the State Historic Preservation Division. This map shows uh, the locations where a few of these artifacts or, or features were discovered. Um, you can see from the corner in the upper left, this is where the airport is located. And this follows the alignment of the westernmost portion of the Naiba agricultural site. So right where it says military training round, um, an old, it looked like a mortar round was discovered at this approximate location. Um, the police were notified and someone arrived to extract the round from the location. They were able to determine that it was actually um, a training round only. There was no explosive or no potential for harm from it. So this was simply removed and the area is now cleared. Um, these features on the lower portion um, appear to be ditches that may have been constructed during the pre-1900s associated with um, plantation agriculture in the region. Um, this location here, it looks like a series of underground buried concrete encased boxes that may have been used as uh, small-scale cesspools to support military barracks or habitation by the army of some kind within this general vicinity. And then finally, there was a bunker located here or what appeared to be a kind of a bunker uh, that uh, cultural service believes may have been possibly used for ammunition storage. We <clears throat> want to the next. And this slide simply includes the body of prior historical literature and archaeological um, surveys that had been performed by investigating the site. And they run the period all the way from 1971 all the way to 2019. And there are some interesting features about all of these. Um, all of the studies indicated plantation and World War II era infrastructure. Um, there's the potential for discovery of prior habitation sites and uses by pre-contact Hawaiians, but these were not found anywhere near the Naiva proper uh, site. It was actually found in locations away from the Naiva subdivision. So uh, this type of uh, resource would not be affected by the project. And in the event that any of these historic resources are found during construction, we will follow the Hawaii Revised Statutes Chapter 60 historic preservation requirements. And that would be to stop all work in the immediate vicinity of the, the, the find and notify the SHPD for additional guidance and instructions. I'm sorry, was someone going to say something? Just checking. And these figures are of CSH, the CSH archeological report that shows some of the earlier studies uh, such as identified by Summers in 1971 for the area. And uh, this simply identifies the, some features that look of interest to them. And again, all of these types of features were associated with either World War II associations or prior plantation uses. This uh, 1980 ACOS report is actually probably not uh, for archeology, span but for biological purposes. So they examined the area surrounding the airport. This other area located here, <clears throat> looked at historic properties in the, in the area. Uh, this is going from about, it looks like 1993 era um, uh, follow-up in order to investigate these sites. 
So again, all of these are um, definitely pre-contact from the Hawaiians. And these are outside the project vicinity. We can go on to look at natural resources. So looking at drainage and hydrology, there are a number of gullies and branches of the Kalaupeilua Gulch. And the, I'll show the gulches in a second, but they appear to cross the different branches of the um, of, of the stream area. And there are no parts of the gulch on the property which shows any uh, regularly flowing water, which leads us to believe that these tend to serve more as a drainage type of facility. Um, and as for natural resources, there's a map uh, prepared by the federal government that identifies things like critical habitat areas. Uh, when we look at the map, we were looking to see if there were any within the project extents, and there were none for federal species. And uh, we also examined other potential for state of Hawaii uh, endangered or threatened uh, plant or animal species, and there were none uh, determined to be present in this area, which is a good finding. <clears throat> This simply identifies the location of the surface waters. So Kalua Kealua Gulch is actually uh, coming from this direction. And then all of these going through the Naiva subdivision are simply tributaries of the initial gulch. So these, these, uh, these uh, dry gulch areas, these were all examined by either biologists or um, botanist, as well as the project archaeologist. <clears throat> this is uh, simply a overview of all of the features that have to be looked at in preparing an environmental assessment. There's actually quite a bit of detail, and I don't want to necessarily um, Go over everyone, uh, everything, because it would take a it would take a lot of time, and I don't want to put anybody to sleep. But I can talk about some of the uh, main things that we did focus on uh, to look at the key environmental features. So the first involved geology and topography. Uh, the project is expected to have a positive long term impact simply because the site will be used for agricultural purposes. Uh, this is a good thing in that it will return irrigation water back to the land, as well as the Molokai Aquifer. Um, impacts in order to construct an agricultural subdivision are expected to be very short term. And the mitigation that would be used would be primarily to ensure that there is no contaminated runoff coming from the project site as the construction is construction progresses to complete the houses and, and other facility, facilities. And over the long term, the agricultural uses should help to reduce the loss of soils due to erosion. Um, for hydrology and drainage, the project is also not expected to have any long-term adverse impacts. Um, one of the positive outcomes by studying it was that we discerned that there were no wetlands located um, at the project vicinity. Um, we also looked at uh, the noise quality at the project site and the lots that were closest to the airport will be reviewed against the requirements of the Molokai Airport Noise Compatibility Program Plan. And these would be simply to ensure that uh, anytime you get close to an airport, noise is a big concern. You don't want to um, have a facility that would become a problem for anyone that's, that's trying to uh, establish a homestead or, or, or simply to uh, establish a place that they can use for agriculture. Um, I think I did speak a little bit about the bi 
biological environment. And the finding is consistent with what we found in that we anticipate no adverse impacts to native flora or fauna species as the site does not currently provide sufficient habitat for native, threatened, or endangered terrestrial faunal species. And again, federally delineated critical habitat is not present in the project area. Um, and, and again, we also did uh, review historic and archeological resources. Um, just, just by way of questioning, if there's anything that anyone wants to know about some of these other things that I did not cover. Please, please let me know and I'd be happy to cover it. Okay, um, let me go ahead and move on to looking at the airport and the project site. Some of the things that um, we have to look at whenever there is an airport present next to a subdivision is whether or not the noise contours would affect any of the possible residents that may be locating in the area. There's a series of these magenta colored rings that go around the airport. These are identified as noise contours. And the thing I'd like to point out is that as you get further away from the airport, these numbers, which are they're called DN, DNL um, sound levels, they become smaller. And as you get closer to the airport, they get higher. So it goes from 55 and 60. At this point in here, that's not colored. It's actually 65. The next one in is 70 and then um, it goes all the way to 75, which is immediately surrounding the runway, where you would expect to hear the loudest noises. Um, part of the reason why some of the lots are vacant are because um, the HHL did not want to release lots that may not be uh, sufficient for its intended uses. So these are still being examined. There may be things that, that could be done. Uh, but that would be a subject for further uh, study as we prepare the draft environmental assessment. Uh, the rest of the information showing on this slide simply identifies some of the regulations that we have to follow. And one of them is that uh, consistent with not citing certain uses too close to an airfield is this document known as FAA Advisory Circular 150-5233. Uh, so these, these documents are some of the kinds of things that we have to look at and adhere to as, as we um, continue the planning process. This uh, section, this slide identifying significance criteria. There's a section in the EA law that says that there are some 12 to 13 criteria that you have to address in order to demonstrate that you've thoroughly evaluated your project and have provided mitigative measures that can reduce the impacts of your project such that you can begin to uh, develop a facility that is consistent with state law. So there's a second page. These are the other, uh, all the way up to, to 13. And you can see that the intention here really is to try to provide a very comprehensive level of protection so that uh, we do projects the right way, we address things like energy consumption, whether or not we affect um, uh, biology and the surrounding environment, water quality, air quality, um, how we use the land and that it's a respectful use of the facility so that um, it will not be a short-term use such as if it were an industrial activity. Um, a discussion of these 13 criteria will be provided in a separate section of the draft EA 
and I'm simply summarizing and reviewing it here just, just for information purposes. The next slide identifies permits and approvals that may be required in order to proceed with the project. All of these requirements address environmental laws and regulations within the jurisdictions of the federal, state, and county of Maui governments. The draft EA will include this list and provide further discussion on any regulatory concerns based on public comments received for the project. Um, I, I could review each of these, but it would be rather lengthy, but um, I think we did cover some of them, such as the FAA Form 7460. There's also this permit called the Department of the Army Permit, and that's exclusively related to the use of any waterway. So we've identified this here because until we uh, fully vet the presence of work in gulches and streams with the Armored Corps of Engineers, we haven't done our due diligence. So that, that's why it's located here, so that we can demonstrate by documentation that um, we, we meet the intent and the purpose of the law. These others are simply things like the EA process, laws that govern historic preservation, laws that govern the proper use of the land to construct a pond so that any discharges of stormwater from work we have done do not pollute waters of the state. And others involve things like um, using irrigation and drinking water supply, uh, what we do with wastewater coming from the site, um, and all the way down to things like whether or not we do a proper land transfer with the state of Hawaii. And then with the County of Maui, these are construction related uh, permits. So in summary, <clears throat> The project adheres to the policy of the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act of 1920, and they simply involve a land use that is not anticipated or expected to have a significant adverse direct, indirect, or cumulative environmental effect. The, number two, the project will provide infrastructure necessary to support the purpose of establishing a new agricultural subdivision for the use and benefit of native Hawaiian and Hawaiian lessees. And finally, it will provide agricultural and residential opportunities consistent with the content and goals of the DHHL general plan and Molokai Island plan. Thank you for this opportunity to present this project. And I'd like to turn this meeting back to Stuart. Um, thank you, Brian, uh, for that. Um, I think at this point in time, uh, what we'd like to do is open it up for any uh, discussions or questions, concerns from the uh, Kiaha families. I did put into the chat earlier that, um, you know, I know I and I, I did meet Kirk before, uh, lot 44, and we know that there's an issue with um, the slope of the road, and which he mentioned before, right? And having a difficult time coming out during the uh, wet season. And so that is one of the lots um, that is proposed for a detention basin. And uh, I know that there's, there's concern that that would be there. I'm not sure uh, your layout of your lot, um, you know, how that would be impacted. Uh, I also want to uh, involve in this discussion Gordon Ring, uh, the engineer, to uh, describe further what uh, that would be and if there are uh, or could be any alternatives. 
So I wanna uh, just turn that over to uh, Gordon and uh, maybe just Kirk, first of all, Mr. Kia, does that correctly represent, I, I know we had the discussion last year at the uh, community meeting. Um, do you wanna share anything more? Well, that um, according to the map that I saw, um, it's putting on right on the top of my lot. Is that where it is? Because from the lot of 44, then coming to the gulch. Um, yeah, right before really the sure gulch is where we're looking at. Yeah. You, you're looking at the gulch, right? Um, yeah. Why don't we put the map back up so we can talk to the map? Hey, let me know if you can see this. Stuart? I don't see uh, yeah. it yet. Hmm. Yeah, I did it this way the last time I see you. How about now? Are we getting anything? Well, am I, no, I don't Come see off. it. No. Okay, we can see your screen. Just gotta oh, make the PowerPoint bigger. Okay, great. And then I think you got one slide up from there. Hey, how are, how are we doing? Can we see that? There, yeah. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Yeah, that's the one um, with the blue. That's on the left side corner of my lot. That's close to the gulch, uh, Gordon. Right. Yeah, that's why we try to put it kind of at the end of the oh, road. Oh, okay. As close to the gulch as possible. So hopefully there's room for that in that area. Okay. Um, yeah, should, should have. Um, are, are we, and Stuart, are we thinking about going across that gulch? No, eh? no road across. Right, the road uh, ends there. I okay. I don't believe so. All right, all right. Even the guys when they came survey, they said, "Oh no, I don't think so." I mm -hmm. said, "Oh, but said, you can ask, you know, the the project guys, but we're only going to survey right here. They ended right there on the top by this blue mark." Mm hmm. Can okay. I throw out a thought on that one? Um, Gordon, so yeah. can road N be terminated um, right near the beginning of lot 44 mm -hmm. and then incorporate the end of the road if it's not if it's not needed to get to the gulch, mm -hmm. can that be added to Mr. Kiaha's lot, especially if there's a, a basin that's going to be created in there. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say move the we, basin into the road lot. But yeah, I mean, something like that. Yeah, we could um, shorten the road and make his lot bigger and then put the basin more where the road is. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I see. Yeah. Um, but Stuart and I did talk about the other one in lot 41. Um, mm -hmm. That one get 
bad drainage when rain. Okay. It it builds up a lot of uh, it kind of catch basins right there because of the exist how the how the land is shaped. The rainwater runs from that. You see where you get the forty three and forty two. I kind of using that access easement road to come in instead of me coming way up on the top. Right above the O. Right above the letter O on the road. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you see that road right there? Yeah, that one with yeah. the arrow. That road is like an easement road. So um, I use that road to come into my lot because it's a lot closer compared to the main road that we have, the Palau Road, which is very long at the beginning. And so um, I use that road and I come in easy access in and out, even if in emergency. But once it gets into lot 42 at the end and lot 41, big rain, you mud bog, you, you cannot really pass. You kind of going into core trees or you're going into another property, which will be the Mauka side property. And they get fenced, so it's not really not good to go that way, but you can come more into lot 41. Everybody kind of using lot 41 to creep over from the mud that's inside there when the big rains come. So that basin is a good spot, but it's inside lot 41. No, that's good. Yeah, lot 41, that is a low spot. Yeah, right on the road in lot 41. Yeah, I think that's why we kind of try to yeah. locate a basin, you know, at the low at the low point. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the um right there, you know, that road that we pointed out, is that a road that's part of the project or is that an easement road of some sort that we would be able to use? Or is yeah, that road end would be a new new paved road. Oh, okay. So that that access road is not part of what's gonna be. Because I see fire hydrants on that road, but I don't know, you know, get hydrants all along from, yeah. you know, from road N all the way to the, the main road. There's about four to six hydrants on that one, but I wasn't sure if that was part of like our access to Naiva or I don't know. So I, I thought maybe you guys would know <laughs> what the... You had an answer to that one. Yes, yeah, so road end um, would be paved, right? And then you could use that for access. Yeah. Yeah, that would be nice if that one was <laughs> paved, would be real good. Because of course, I would put my, anybody else who belong with that, I'll go put a tow boat booth over there. <laughs> hey, try to access, bro. <laughs> you just come in here. <laughs> because where that, where that road comes in, that easement road up to the, the letter O in the road N, that's another low spot because of that road that comes down. So when water does run down that road, it piles up, I guess, right there at the top of lot 42. So that's another, just from driving in there during the rains, that's another low spot, but maybe a little clearing of that area might help the water flow, but just kind of throwing that out there too. Okay, it's good to know, thanks. Yeah. Um, Gordon, how you guys, and Brian, how you guys plan on doing the electric? Like, um, is it gonna be underground or is it gonna be overhead? Cause there's a lot of wind. And why I mention it is because if you go overhead, there's a lot of wind that blow to Naiva. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we're planning to do overhead. Oh, okay. So at least right now, anyway. Yeah. Be pulled to okay, okay. All right. Okay, that's the only reason why I I, I asked mm. because there's a lot of wind blowing through. But okay, we could secure it. Um, sorry, I get one more, one more comment too. I get uh, I guess the question uh, maybe it was answered, but I never hear. Um, so that easement road right above lot 42, did you say that road was going to get paved too or 
No, that's not part of oh, okay. this project. Okay. And then, the, um, but I know it's not on here, but the access road would be mm. the yep, main that one, road, yeah? Yeah, that would be okay. um, part of it. Okay, because I know right over there by that Palao Road, that entrance is also another low spot water. that holds water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, at the intersection with N or at the highway? Um, at the it's not on this map. I don't see it, but it would be um, what is that? To the right of lot eighteen, I guess the main entrance into um mm. Naiva, which would be Palao okay. Palao Road or Palao Street. That's the one that runs alongside. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, a lot. Yeah, so right that lot, you know, the right corner of lot 22. Mm -hmm. I guess would, yeah. that's the Palao Road. I mean, I'm guessing that will probably be the main entrance mm -hmm. into the subdivision. Yes. Yeah, so that one that one has a low spot in that uh yeah halfway up that Gordon has your team uh topoed all of that area? The roadways are yeah so we need to I guess we still need to overlay these concept drainage designs with that with the topo. That would be the next step. Um Gordon, you know when I I go right in the back there and I go down. And just for check if you get crazy, can guys like burn fire? Um, I take my truck and I go all the way down to this Palau Road. And it gets really bad because of the rain that we've had uh, recently. But um, there is some high, high wall um, um, where properties are. And um, that would consist of lot 22, all the way down um, to the bottom lot, I don't know what lot number, number one. That main road over there is terrible right now. And I know you guys are gonna fix them up, but that high part, is that gonna be there? Or would that be taken down to, if you saw pictures of it? Uh, I guess, yeah, we'll, we'll regrade the road. You know, to create the roadway, the paved road. But, um, I mean, pretty much trying to follow what's already there. Yeah, as yeah. As much as possible. Okay, okay. So you get like um, photographs of how high the sides are. Because mm, yeah, lots it should be in our topo. It. Okay. Okay. So, so those lots that. adjacent are, are high, a lot higher than the road? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's higher than the road. Oh, okay. And yeah, the I, road kind of the road kind of goes downhill from uh, lot 22. When you get to like lot 24, it starts to 23, 24, it starts to like kind of dive down. The whole, dive. the whole property slopes, yeah. Slopes 22 all the way. And then when you get to Lot one and two, that area is all way lower than the oh, yeah, it's lots, all yeah. eaten up, all eaten up. My truck going in in, in ruts uh, all down this side, but I know you're gonna touch up the road, you're gonna grade them and it'll be nice. Mm -hmm. Um okay, okay. Um the other lots that I'm looking at are are those you know the roadway, like um when you come back to lot. The lot 15 and lot 39. That's another road. And then it turns right by lot 13. That's another road, like one cul de sac, yeah. It, it ends right there, yeah. And they give adjacent to the lots in there, yeah. They can get to their places. Um, the only thing why I mentioned that and, and this other road that goes towards my side going towards the west is those roads are um, of grass. 
I mean, I know because of the rains, but um, I know you're going to touch them up, but are those all similar to what my end would be? There is no, it's just a turnaround, yeah? Is that correct, Gordon? That's going to just be on turnabout roads, like a dead like, end? Oh, like road R and road S? E yeah. Yes, like yes. Those, right, yeah, like a cul-de-sac, whatever, turnaround. Okay. Pretty much, pretty much like our minds would be, yeah. Uh, just an end there. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so will we be getting? And I heard you mention Brian of the irrigation water. The, the, yeah. So yeah. that'll be all yeah, put in, Gordon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you guys have water already, right? But we're gonna yes. um, extend the. MIS system, the, the irrigation system into this subdivision. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that would all be available for you guys. Okay. Um, I get, I get another comment about um that may be helpful. Yeah. Um, I know, I know they're not here, but the guys that a lot fifty seven. Um. I'm pretty sure between lot 57 and 56 is another low spot in the road. Um, you know, I don't know, maybe another potential. You see how I get like a little gully that running through there. Yeah, right by the letter J. I think that might be another low spot to kind of keep in mind. Yeah, that. I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing, I know the road goes down, so I know it gets mud too when it rains over there. So just, uh, you know, whatever you guys decide to do. Just uh, a heads up Thanks. with that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so I guess a question um, we're looking at um, Extending the uh, MIS water, um, above ground power lines and electric, and uh, paved road. You said, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So the projected awesome. dates for these, um, uh, Stuart and Brian and Gordon and Andrew. Is that like um, um, pretty much in, in phases, but we're looking at 2026, maybe 2027? Okay, I think, uh, let's see, the, after the, the EA is finalized, which hopefully will be this summer, and then, um, the design phase will um, go forward uh, full force, and um, we need to uh, discuss with Armtal what that schedule would be. But let's say, um, you know, we're thinking maybe a, a year to year and a half on design and engineering work. Um, sounds like there's uh, some more, um, you know, I'm not sure of if all of the topo is completed, but, uh, you know, I appreciate that you've brought up a lot of these, uh, the low areas and the concerns that you folks face right now. So we'll need to incorporate that into the, into the design work. Um, at that point, then um, we will need to go to the state legislature for uh, construction funding for this project. Um, I, I'm not sure if we have an estimate, uh, but that's something that would uh, occur once we get into more of the design work and then uh, request from Arm Tao a, a rough order of magnitude on the, on the construction funding that's needed. And then at that point, uh, we all have to, you know, hooey up and then go to the legislature and 
and uh, you know request that funding in the uh, probably in next year or the following year's um, uh, legislative budget. And so, um, Kamakani, what we'll do is um, after this meeting in the next uh, day or so, we'll try to put together a, um, a schedule that we can share with the community uh, with a rough um, order of magnitude on what it's going to um, cost to put in all of these improvements. Uh, and then um, we'll uh, try to share that with the, uh, with the commission. Um, we are putting our uh, budget together to the commission, our operating budget. Uh, but then shortly after that, we, we're, we're starting our legislative budget in the fall. So the sooner we can get some good information, we can uh, we can uh, hopefully prioritize that. Uh, you know, we go to the legislature every year with uh, requesting funding um, for uh, Naiva as well as other subdivisions around the state. So um, we're going to continue to do that and to uh, to press forward. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, I, I just maybe just one last question. Um, I was wondering, I I know we had some funding. I know it wasn't a lot, but I haven't really kept up with what is left or if there is any. I know there was originally some money set aside from, you know, that big amount that was given some, you know, recently. Um, but I don't know oh, if you guys... Did... Million. Yeah, yeah. I, I know a lot has changed, yeah. I mean, plenty revisions to that, but... I know there was, I remember seeing originally there was 30 million set aside, but would you guys know like how much funding there is currently for this project or Naiva? Like how much we have or there is to use or that's currently? Well, we do have um, some funding, but these were more for the to account for the new lots because um, what Act 279, um, and, and that's the $600 million bill. Okay, so um, the purpose of that was to um, reduce waiting list, um, provide for new lots. So what we're uh, trying to do is to um, use that portion with uh, some new uh, ledge funding and to combine that. And uh, you are correct that at one time there was uh, like a plan for 30 million, but um, because of, uh, you know, the all statewide priorities and residentials and things like that, you know, we were, we were lucky to, uh, keep some funding for Naiva as well as for the Holehua scattered lots too. So those are new lots that are gonna come uh, uh, online. We have a, a report to the commission uh, next week also on the Holehua scattered lots. So we're doing uh, multiple things on Molokai to get additional lots and we know we need more funding. I mean, that's not a, there's no question about that. So uh, again, we'll, we'll try to uh, buoy up and go to the ledge. Uh, we have Senator Decoit, who is, uh, you know, Molokai Senator. So um, we need to, we need to work with her and get this, get a specific line item in the budget so that it doesn't get it doesn't get lost amongst the other, yeah, yeah, the lump sum of things. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I'm glad we've made it this far. Um, I know there was timeline, you know, um, deadlines on those funding, yeah, for the 
EA and the planning and design. And so I feel like we're, I mean, I'm grateful that we're moving in the right direction. And thank you guys for helping and pushing this along. Stuart for hanging in there with us. <laughs> You know, I know my dad. My dad was one of the original uh, lessees that was awarded back in 1986. And so I know uh, he like building my house over there. I know he like kind of started doing it, you know, kind of farming already, but trying to trying to just get on and be there, yeah, before no can. <laughs> so well, I give you guys all the credit, you know, for being pioneers out there and yeah I was back in the day in 1986 you know when we were out there and in fact Arm Tao was the surveyor at that time too so you know this is really uh, you know legacy planning so we want to get this done as as much as uh, as you folks awesome Thank you guys. I don't have any questions anymore. Okay. Um, would uh, any staff have any comments or, um, you know, Andrew Choi in our planning office, they're the, the pros at environmental assessments. And, uh, you know, so we, we really appreciate um, his support and his guidance too as you go through this um this process oh that's overly kind but thank you Stuart. um i just wanted to note we are recording the meeting so we will uh eventually um, post it to the department's website so if you know of other um, naive lessees who wanted to attend tonight but weren't able to make it um we'll have the meeting recording available um for them to to view and then as Stuart had mentioned, um, next week, uh, we'll be presenting uh, the same presentation to the Hawaiian Homes Commission. Um, so it'll be an opportunity for um, naive lessees who might not have been able to make it tonight to um, view the same information uh, next week at the commission. Yeah. I, I, sorry, I get one more. Um, you, I know you guys are saying about the updates. Um, I know Stuart, you mentioned that you were gonna Try send us some updates. Is it would that come through the mail or would that be like email or just like a public notice that we would have to go and find or how would we get those updates? Well, um, so we'll be um, we'll have a link to the uh, the EA document itself because. Um, where we will, um, you know, by statute entertain, you know, 30 day comment period. And so <clears throat> we'll incorporate um, your comments uh, as part of that process. Um, <clears throat> and then I think we have a, uh, we have a landing page on our DHHL website. Um, and we can uh, post updates there. Um, so it would be the draft environmental assessment. And then we get to the final um, <clears throat> EA, which the commission will take action. And what we're um, trying to do is <clears throat> to publish the draft EA in May and then uh, after the 30 day comment period, mm -hmm. then uh, provide responses mm -hmm. to the comments mm -hmm. and then uh, do whatever adjustments we need to do in the final EA. That will also go to the commission. So there will be another touch point at that time, should there be <laughs> any further, uh, further concerns. So then the, um, the website that Stuart was talking about is the same website that you folks used uh, to access the meeting tonight. <clears throat> so the information um, will be on that website. Yeah, we are aware that there are um, 
lessees who do not live on Molokai. And, and so I, I know that sometimes it's been difficult to um, communicate to all, uh, but we'll, I think through the website and through um, the help of Arm Towel and our planning office, then we'll, we'll try to uh, cast out the biggest net that we can and, you know, um, provide the information, keep you folks updated. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank oh, you, Stuart. I, Thank you, everybody. I guess, um, did, did we leave a contact information for them? Um, if, you know, they wanted to reach out to us, is there like a general email address that they can send um, any questions that they might have? Um, you know what, I'll, I'll put our finding office email address in the chat um, so that um, if, if there is a question or comment or you folks have at any time, you can email this address and we'll try to uh, respond as quick, quickly as possible. Okay, Ooh, sounds good, thank you. Okay, um, any last minute, anything, uh, Arm Towel, Juan Garcia? Yeah, thanks, Stu. I, I don't want to prolong the meeting, but I just want to clarify, uh, there was a segment where there was three options for each of the lessees. Uh, they can either use it for <clears throat> ag purposes, build a house, or do both. Um, I just want to confirm that these are ag lots and the lessees will be required to cultivate the land and use it as an agricultural lot. Uh, they will also have the option to build a dwelling or not build a dwelling. But the purpose of the lot is ag, which they will be required to cultivate on the, on the property. I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Okay, got it. Yeah, so um, Brian, let's uh, take a look at that slide and and uh, incorporate um, Homestead Services uh, comments into that. Make adjustments that we need to make. Okay. Juan, you did not prolong the meeting because that was a very important point. Okay, uh, if not, mahalo again for everyone's participation, especially the Kiahas. Uh, we'll look forward to uh, seeing you at the uh, commission meeting next week, the community meeting. And- uh, Oh, I'm sorry, Stuart, what is the date and time on that one? The commission um, meeting is um, April 17th and 18th. Uh, the commission business starts at uh, 9.30 in the morning. And uh, the meeting is followed up with a community meeting at, uh, I think it's six o'clock. And they're going to be in person here on Molokai. Yes, it'll be, um, you have a virtual option also too for that. Oh. Okay. Oh, good to and know. So that um, that is on the link is on the uh, on the uh, commission agenda. Okay. You guys are pros. Huh? Um, I just dropped into the chat where you can find the um, commission agenda on the website. Thank you, Andrew. You're welcome. Perfect. Okay. Um, if not anything else, I, you know, great comments and feedback. Um, 
and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Aloha. Thanks. Bye.